All right, next on the list of tools we're going to examine today is proportional editing. Um, proportional editing is a way that you can get all sorts of effects, as you can see here. Uh, it actually might even be clearer if I do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's something that I use a fair amount <coughs> to help design or, or achieve specific shapes that would be tedious to do in other ways. So I'm going to hide that. And we're just going to start with a plane. Add mesh plane. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to subdivide it. I'm going to subdivide it 10 times. Uh, actually, you know what? We can just type in 20. And that'll be enough. So we have a bunch of geometry. And that's going to help us kind of get a sense of how proportional editing works. So you can enable it in a couple of different ways. You can hit O, uh, or you can click up here on the top center of the viewport. This is the proportional editing. It's the f um, rightmost tool in the center. Okay, little circle. And then next to that, we've got a couple of options, and then we have a bunch of different shapes. And these are the shapes of the fall off. So by default, it's set to smooth. And the best way to describe how it, how it works is just to use it. So I have proportional editing on, and I have the default smooth. I'm going to select a vertex. Just one vertex, doesn't matter which one. Um, preferably something towards the center, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to hit G to move and Z to just move it in one direction. And then I can use the scroll wheel to change the size of my fall off. So what proportional editing is doing is it's moving the, whatever you have selected as much as you were telling it, and then it's moving everything else in the sphere of influence represented by this circle. That's changing size. It's moving everything else, a percentage of that total movement based on one, the size of this ring, and two, the shape of the fall off. So you can see as I move this center point up, we are pretty closely matching what this smooth shape looks like. You can go into front view and you can see even more so. It's pretty close. Okay. Uh, you can select multiple vertices, and you can move them, okay? So if you were going for, if you wanted to create like a hilly terrain, you do that. What I would encourage you to do is, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, fall off types. So with this, before I change anything on this plane, I'm going to quickly add a array modifier, set the count to eight, and we'll set the relative offset to like 1.2. Okay, just so we have, uh, actually, we're gonna, yeah, that works. We don't have to make it any more complicated than that. And then I'll click apply. So now I have eight subdivider planes. Um, and now what I can do is on each one, I'll move this one up with the smooth fall off. So I'll say may maybe to get a really good sense of this, select one vertex and I'll go G to move it and uh, to move it, Z to limit it to the Z axis. And we'll move it, uh, let's see, one seems like it's too much. So GZ.5, okay? So that's with the sm smooth fall off. Then I'll go to the next one. We can change the fall off type to sphere. GZ.5. Okay, there's the spherical fall off. The next one we will change to root. GZ.5. Okay, so this is more peaked. And we'll just go, go on down the line so you can kind of get a sense of the different shapes of everything. Sharp. Linear. 
Okay, so these are straight edges. I'm going to go constant. Creates kind of a plateau. And then this last one, random, gives us that. Okay, so we can see all sorts of different shapes and things. Uh, and again, we can uh, kind of mix and match these if we wanted to go something domed, but then also add a little bit of randomness. We can start with the domed and then come back with some randomness, and now we have that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so you can use these. You know, I think terrain is probably the most obviously related uh, application for these. But you can also just use them to modify the shape of your geometry. If you want to smooth something out or gradually change the shape, it's kind of like sculpting, but a little bit different. Um, so with all of these, I'm just going to hit H to hide them. I'm going to add a torus to my scene. And I'm going to right click on these values here to reset them to the default values. OK. So here's my torus. And I've got a lot of subdivisions here, which is good, because that gives me more opportunities to, to kind of show how this works. I'm going to go back to my smooth uh, profile. And this is an important thing to know about the proportional editing tool. Well, the proportional editing tool does not care about your edge flow. It does not care how things are connected. It only cares about proximity. So case in point, if I select a vertex here, uh, actually, I'll grab one on the outside. But if I select this, this vertex on the outside of the torus, and I say, and I try to move it, and I make my influence uh, large, you can see that it's going to move everything. OK? Now, if I go to my settings here and turn on connected only, now it cares about how they're connected. Okay, you can see it's not affecting that opposite side anymore. Um, so let's say you wanted to move like just the outside of this piece, right? Then you can if I turn off connected only. It's going to grab everything, and I turn on connected only. It's going to leave the inside alone. Okay, so that can be an important option to pay attention to. Scroll wheel to change the size of the influence. You can also hit, pl uh, oh no, never mind. I thought you could hit plus or minus on the keyboard, but it doesn't seem to want to work that way. But yeah, scroll wheel will, will change that size. Um, there might also be a key command that I don't remember. It's not F, shift F. Yeah, um, but scroll wheel is, is how I always do it. So. Um, so yeah, you can use proportional editing if you were going for like a, maybe you're going for a, a particular look, um, I don't know. No, this is a shape that's really kind of tricky to get by hand. So proportional editing allows you to get these kind of smooth deformations with pretty minimal effort. Another really cool thing to do with proportional editing is creating moonscapes. So you can create craters really easy with proportional editing. Uh, and I'll show you how I did it. So I guess we'll hide this and we'll just create a new plane. Add a new plane, right clicks, uh, oops, not shade smooth, shade flat. Edit mode, subdivide it, we'll do, we'll go 30 times just for fun. Why not? And I'm going to select the center vertex. And I'm going to go, I was having probably the most I, well, I liked Sphere the best as far as this effect, but it doesn't really matter. Each one works. Um, but I'm going to, with proportional editing on, I'm going to move everything up, bring my area of influence down. So this is going to be the size of my crater. I move it up about maybe that much. And then with the same thing selected, come on, shift, it's not, oh, there we go. OK. Uh, now with the same thing selected, I'm going to move it back down, but I'm going to bring the size of the influence down just a little bit. And now I get the rim of my crater. 
Okay, so there's a pretty simple crater. And then if you're going for something like the moon's surface, what you can do is start adding multiple craters and have them kind of overlap a little bit. Oops, Z, there we go. Okay, and that's gonna start to feel kind of moon-like. They have a little, again, it's move it up in one direction and then move it back down with a slightly smaller area of influence. And there's, there's your crater. So, fun little thing I stumbled across as I was prepping for this.